Hello, and welcome to the Knitworthy Podcast. My name is Brienne, also known as Being Brienne on Ravelry and Instagram, and welcome to the show. Today is episode 93. Uh, it is Thursday, November 8th, 2018, and um, this is going to be the final episode of the podcast. I wanted to let you know in advance instead of leading it to the end, uh, just so that uh, mostly for me, it'll sink in a little bit better. <laughs> it's just, um, you know, I'm, we've been, I've been doing this for four and a half years and I think it's just time. I think it has been a really fun time with you guys and I've really loved all of the friendships that I've made and the interactions that I've had with y'all and, um, it's just been wonderful and I think it's just time to be done. So, uh, today's going to be the final episode. Kind of wish I could have made it to a hundred. Not going to lie. That, that part of me that loves even numbers is like, just wait, just wait. But I think it's time. So, um, it's going to be a shorter episode today, which is totally okay. Um, and, uh, so let's get on with what we're doing. So, uh, the first thing I have is I have... Brian's Christmas socks for this year. Every year I make Brian a pair of Christmas socks. It's been a tradition for years upon years. And uh, he looks forward to them. I look forward to making them. Um, And so I'm knitting these out of Cascade Heritage Prints. And this is colorway number 46, which is like a kind of a camo kind of print. I mean, with stripes. Camo isn't really stripes. I know that, but um, but the colors are kind of camo-ish. Uh, I have the first sock finished. The second sock, I have managed to get uh, past the foot. I turned the heel, and I'm about five rows into the leg. I love this yarn. I would knit out of this yarn anytime. It's just a great, solid, heavy working yarn. And, um, it is on the softer side uh, compared to like, you know, some like opal, which, uh, isn't scratchy, but it is just a little bit more rustic. Um, and I just really, I've made several socks out of this yarn. I love it. And, oh, my bag. I just showed my bag. So I'll tell you who made my bag. My bag is made by A Needle Runs Through It, who is on Etsy. She still makes bags, I believe, on Etsy. But I purchased this probably about five or six years ago, maybe four. It is one of my first purchases when I first started getting into uh, knitting bags. I think it's beautiful. All right, my next project. This bag is by Stitch Marks the Spot. I got this from McDana of Unwind last year when I did the fiber share uh, swap and she happened to be my partner and you know how much I love Dana of Unwind Yarn Company and I just happened to get paired with her for fiber share which was like the funnest thing I was so excited and you know I think it was fun for her too knowing that uh, I already really enjoy her yarn and her things so that was really fun um, let's see, this yarn that I'm using is from Misha's Obsessions. It is a, her gold base, which is a 400 yard superwash merino nylon fingering weight blend in the Hogwarts Express colorway. So let's take a look. This is the yarn, which I think is just gorgeous. It's like a silvery gray with a red and gold, um, pops of color and this is what it looks like knit up so here's the the f- underside of the foot so you can kind of see that's what it looks like but then you turn around and oh my goodness look at how gorgeous it is with that texture and that yarn combination I think it's just beautiful so this is uh, Hermione's everyday sock stitch pattern which is a four row pattern super easy to memorize and I just stuck it on a Wendy D. Johnson pattern um, toe up sock 
uh, and it's really, uh, I, I pretty much all the socks I've been knitting lately have been that pattern, um, or a toe up pattern because I really, I've been enjoying toe up socks a lot. Um, when we first started, I was pretty much like a cuff down kind of girl and now I'm really toe up. I really just enjoy that. But I tell you, magic looping, unless they create some sort of magic thing where I don't actually have to do, uh, that, I guess that'd be a, a circular sock machine. <laughs> unless they create some sort of magic where I don't actually have to do the knitting so much. I can just like supervise the knitting that I need house elves. Um, this is really my preferred method over DPNs or even, um, I've tried, I've tried, uh, two circs. I've tried a small, like the small circumference circular needles. I just really enjoy my magic loop, which is good because I have a ton of magic loop length needles for socks. So that's good. Uh, I've been knitting on these mainly at home. Uh, my head just hasn't been in a real sweatery kind of place. And so I haven't gotten a whole lot done on my other sweater, my February, classy February lady sweater, um, which I'll show you next. Um, but that's okay. You know, knitting keeps, which is excellent. I have gotten some done, which is good, but this is my classy February lady sweater. And as you can see, I've gotten far enough now that the, uh, it's starting to kind of take shape for that, uh, raglan shape. So here's the back. These are the two sides right here. Uh, the, the sides, this is where my arms are going to go. <laughs> and these are the fronts right here and right here. So when you fold it like this, you can kind of see how it's going to take shape like this. It looks gorgeous. I should just wear it like this, right? Right. I love this yarn. This yarn is gorgeous. Let me see if I can find the, it's somewhere in this big bag. I know it. <laughs> of course, the last place I look. Although if I did find it and I kept on looking, that wouldn't be good either. Uh, this is Dream and Color Classy in the My Fair Lady colorway. That's what the tab looks like. Colorway number 910 is My Fair Lady. I got this at the Loopy U. Um, last year when uh, Michelle and Lorette and I went to go to Yarn Fest in Colorado and we stopped by the Loopy U to go see uh, all the loopy elves and go shopping there. They had never been shopping at the loopy year before. So that was a lot of fun. We just really enjoyed ourselves. And that whole trip was just a great, uh, a great trip. Number one, because uh, Michelle and Lorette and I had spent a lot of time together, but not actually taken a trip together before. And so I don't think any of us were quite sure how that was gonna work. Um, they had taken trips together, but I had not been included in the mix. And so it, ended up being great. We had such a wonderful time. And I think that, um, it was just a great mix of, of personalities and people. And we, um, you know, had space when we needed it. We had fun when we wanted to, they took classes. I was happy just to sit and talk and knit and shop. And it was just great. Uh, and, oh, that makes me remember, uh, I'm going to be going back to DFW Fiber Fest um, in April and I'm so looking forward to it. I'm going with Tammy, who's Darth Knitter, um, with Wanda, with all of my friends that I went to do before. We're all going together again and we're going to hang out and have fun. I missed out. I was working. I missed out on being able to sign up for classes. The classes that I wanted were all full. And so I'm going to have to, um, see if there's anything else that's left that I'd like be interested in still. Um, but yeah, so I'm, but you know what? If I don't take classes, it's no big deal. I had so much fun last year. I took one class, my class with uh, Franklin Habit, which was wonderful. And uh, then the rest of the time I just shopped and I sat and I talked and I knit and made new friends and um, it was great. So uh, 
seriously looking forward to that again. I think it's going to be a great trip. I'm already saving up money. Have I knit with any of the yarn that I purchased last this this year? No. Do I need to? Yes, desperately. But um, I'm already saving up money <laughs> for this next trip. <laughs> Hopefully by then I'll have knit with something that I purchased at DFW this year. We'll see. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, eh, it's okay. Um, let's see. I did not finish anything. It's been so busy. Work has picked up. They've been having me training new cashiers at work at Target. And uh, that's been crazy busy. And um, the other day I had four people that I was training all at once. And that was just a little bit insane. Wow. It's hard to train people when you have four people at a time. Especially when you need individualized attention. But I managed to do it. And they're all little baby cashiers now. <laughs> that's what my... My manager, Amy, calls them baby cashiers. It's very adorable. Okay, so Gilding the Lily. Um, I participated in FiberShare again this uh, last time. I had such a good time. Oh, my goodness. And I had a wonderful uh, person that I sent things to. had a wonderful person that sent things to me. Excuse me. Um... And funny enough, both of my people were from Michigan. Isn't that hilarious? Of all the places in the United States that I could have gotten partners from, both of my people came from Michigan. I should have seen where, like how far away they were from each other. That would have been funny. You live 15 minutes up the road from each other. Oh my goodness. Your best friends, what? Oh my goodness. So um, let me show you what I got from my fiber share partner. My partner that I sent to, I sent several skeins of yarn and uh, some tea from a local tea and spice shop here in, uh, on the Branson Landing. I sent stitch markers and chocolate and um, just all kinds of fun things. I had such a good time. Oh, I sent her uh, a bar of Tuft Woolen's soap uh, for the wool soap, which is amazing. I love that stuff now. I got this soap for myself, like the body soap for myself, and uh, some of the um, like essential oil, um, like body perfume, which is amazing. My very favorite scent from them is black tea and bergamot. I want to like lather myself up in that and then like just smell like it all day long because it is so good. And whenever I go into my bathroom, I can smell the soap in my shower and it smells amazing oh my goodness love it um I also have red currant and mandarin which is beautiful that's my second favorite and I have one more which I can't remember at the moment I think it's like a plum a plum scent but anyways let's talk about fiber share if you're unfamiliar with fiber share um it is a instagram based uh, swapping fun thing and you get pa paired with a person that you send a fun package to and you get matched with a person who sends a fun package to you they are not the same person they are different people so you have two partners it is so much fun you fill out this very long questionnaire uh, to which you specify the things that you love the things that you don't love so much things if you have allergies, things that you're other things that you're interested in. Um, and you know, you're just your preferences. Um, maybe things that you collect, things that you're interested in. It's so great. And you kind of get, get an idea of the person that you are going to be sending things to. And then you send them things. You send them at least 200 grams of yarn. Um, that's the requirement. Other than that, if you want to send extra things, that's totally okay. Um, but the 200 grams of yarn, that's what you um, are required to send. They have, uh, you can specify if you prefer like acrylic yarns or if you like more natural fibers. You can specify, uh, you know, like your favorite dyers, people that you 
are interested in trying out and it's not like you know like a mandate of you have to send me this yarn like the specific yarn but it's just you know kind of like more guiding post of you know these are the thing kind of things that I like so of course I specified that I prefer natural fibers and um, so this this one the dog chewed off the oh dogs chewed off the uh, yarn beyond so this is the first yarn that I got it's gorgeous this is Manasso Uruguay in the Clara uh, base it's black forest is the colorway it's a hundred percent superwash merino 358 or 385 yards per uh, 100 grams so isn't that gorgeous I think that really needs to be like a hat I think that's really pretty I just love that pop of teal amongst the black and even the black has like kind of undertones of of that teal color so that's the first thing I received the next thing I got she was very generous which was just amazing and it made me so happy to get this lovely package full of goodies and chocolate which I promptly ate promptly ate the chocolate this is Madeline Tosh in her Twist Light. It's a 75% merino wool, 25% nylon. Fingering weight, 420 yards. And um, let me see if I can find a colorway. I'm messing this up. Looks like it's colorway 1136. So I'm thinking that would be a beautiful addition to a shawl, like a multicolor shawl. Isn't that pretty? Okay, obviously I love blue, right? Yes, blue, purple, green, teal. If it's somewhere in that thing, I'm, I'm thrilled. So the next thing, I don't remember if I even specified that I was interested in this dyer. However, look at what I got. I got some October House Fiber Arts yarn. This is her Sojourn Sock which is 460 yards of a superwash merino nylon blend, four ply, in the elderberry colorway. I wish, I don't know if you can see, this has just a beautiful shine to it. Can you see that? And I love that colorway. It's just a beautiful kind of a lavender elderberry colorway. Um, but I love October House. In fact, um, on my wheel, which my cat has broken, uh, is some October House Fiber actually right now. I need to put a new drive band on it because my cat has bitten through it. Oh my word. This cat. Oh my goodness. She's adorable and she's just the sweetest cat. But she loves to play with the drive band on my spinning wheel. And unfortunately, we live in such a small place that I don't really have a good place to put my spinning wheel other than where it currently is and I can't exactly ban her from the majority of the house because it's a very open kind of concept um so yeah so I was super bummed to go and realize that my drive band has been broken oh Callie what are we gonna do with you um, the last thing that I received the last skating yarn that I received from my partner is this beautiful yarn which I have no idea how she knew I wanted to try this dyer didn't even mention it but it's from Hue Local Yarns and this is the Upstate colorway in her spun sock which is an 80 10 10 superwash merino cashmere nylon blend hello cashmere it's a fingering weight which you know I love a good fingering weight yarn my gosh seriously um this is a lovely like a a light brown colorway with uh, speckles of darker brown and kind of like an orange color you see that right there it's not pretty so I think this is gonna be a pair of socks because I do think that that would be beautiful in a sock don't you think so I do the last thing that came into my stash <laughs> there's more is if you remember I placed an order with Nomadic Yarns for a skein of the Arthur Weasley and her dressy sock 
Oh my gosh, right? Uh, look at that yarn. Okay, it's gorgeous. 462 yards of a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon blend. You two can go on Etsy and go get some of her yarn. She mostly has Harry Potter themed yarns. And I bought Molly Weasley for myself. Of course, if you buy Molly Weasley, you have to buy Arthur Weasley to buy, to make a pair of socks for your husband. Am I wrong? No, I am not wrong. So I think this is going to be, I think next year I'm going to make Christmas socks for me and Brian and uh, make Molly Weasley socks for me and Arthur Weasley socks for him. How cute would that be? It would be adorable. Oh my goodness. So yes. And uh, I believe she's been going on a dying hiatus through the end of the year uh, as far as like her dyed to order things. Now, if you want to purchase yarn from her, traditionally she has a five to six week lead time. So you purchase the yarn, it is dyed once you order it, uh, and she has about five to six weeks uh, usually in which it takes her to do that because she has a very high volume store is wonderful for her I'm very happy and honestly I have sock yarn enough that I can wait and I know it's not like I need to start casting on this sock right this second so um let's talk about books yay I finished Aunt Dimity's Death by Nancy Atherton it was adorable was it predictable why yes it was was it so fun? Yes, it was. Was it cozy as a cozy mystery should be? Yes, it was. It was all those things. I actually um, purchased the second book on Kindle, um, which is Aunt Dimity and the Duke. And I have started that book. I'm not very far into it. I cannot find my iPad. I have looked and looked, cannot find it anywhere. I don't know where it is. So uh, I prefer reading on my Kindle on my iPad just because I don't have to do this every 30 seconds to swipe through the next page. So um, I will need to find that and get to reading because I've, I, I'm have i into where it starts getting interesting. Um, I'm a little bit frustrated that the lead person, the, the, uh, the female character is described as being a little overweight and frumpy. <laughs> Not all people who are overweight are frumpy people. Okay. So that was just my own little pet peeve. Um, you know, I'm fine with her being overweight and, you know, still put together. She's got a good job. It's not like, you know, she's, you know, has, you know, like she's not a good person. She's fine. She is just, you know, I don't know. It just frustrates me a little bit. It's just a little bit in the moines. Um, so that's what I finished. I finished Aunt Dimity's Death by Nancy Atherton. Dimity is spelled D-I-M-I-T-Y in case you were interested. I also just recently finished Girl Logic by Eliza Schlesinger. She is a comedian who has written a couple books. This one is talking about the way girls, women tend to think. We overthink things generally. This is not all women. Not all women overthink things to death, but a lot of women do, of course. Um, so it was just very interesting. You know, she's, she talks a lot about being single and, you know, being a girl in the dating world and beyond that. Thank goodness. Because yeah, um, because I was not a very good single person. I, yeah, I am so thankful for my husband. Wow. I'd be a mess without him. So, uh, but it was very interesting. There is quite a bit of language. So if that bothers you, don't read it. Don't listen to it. 
but I liked that it was uh, read by the author because she has a lot of, she uses a lot of funny voices. She, the, the way she emphasizes certain things, you know, you really like, it's like, it's just so fun. I just, I really enjoy listening to books read by the author because you know that they know how they meant to have inflection as they were writing it and all that stuff. And then I started a book called Come Sundown by Nora Roberts. This is a psychological thriller. Uh, I do enjoy her books that are like that. I've read several. I'm, try I'm blinking on the names of those books at the moment, but they were good. Um, they have a lot of, you know, like, you know, kidnapping and bad people, but that's okay. Um, you know, every book needs to have conflict and I found that I like hers. Um, so that's what I started. Uh, and then I've, of course, I'm reading Aunt Dimity and the Duke once I find my iPad, wherever it may be in this house. It, we only have a thousand square foot condo. Like, where could it be? Who knows? I'm obviously annoyed by this. Can you tell? Oh gosh. So, uh, contest. Unwind Yarn Company. We had a contest going on, a giveaway for uh, a skein of her yarn that looks like this, which is a beautiful uh, skein of yarn, and its name is The Most Sincere Pumpkin Patch. And But I don't think that this is just a fall colorway. Do you? I think this could be really like a year-round colorway, just because it's, it's not like so fallish that you can't wear it any other time of the year. But let's face it. I wear my red and white Christmas socks all year long. I wore them yesterday. So, um, you know, it's okay. If you want to wear Halloween socks in March, you do it. You rock those socks, friend. My tummy is rumbling. It's early and I haven't eaten. And this is the only thing that I've had all day is Diet Coke, is this little bit of Diet Coke. So my tummy is rumbling. If you can hear, I'm so embarrassed. Sorry. Um, the winner of this beautiful skin of yarn is number six, Phoenix Anew. So darling, contact me on Ravelry. My name is Being Brand, B-E-I-N-G-B-R-I-A-N-N-E -N -N -E, on Ravelry. Or you can email me at knitworthypodcast at gmail.com. And I'd be happy to send that to you if you give me your address. I promise not to stalk you or hold on to that information. Um, and that's it for me for today and for the podcast. Um, I did have a bless your heart for today. Um, I have so enjoyed the last four and a half years of podcasting. Thank you so much for being my friends and for coming to see me and for showing up and saying hi and for talking to me. It's been amazing. And so the bless your heart for today, this episode is Psalm 122 verse eight in the Amplified. And it says, for the sake of my brothers and my friends, I will now say, may peace be with you. Love you guys. And don't forget, I will not say it again, but I will say it to you and you have to remember it this time. Okay, ready? Don't forget that you are knitworthy. Bye friends.